Hello and welcome. My name is Raj Basord. I'm a consultant psychiatrist uh, based in private practice in Harley Street. And I'm delighted to be joined here at the Royal College of Psychiatrists Annual Congress in uh, London, the Excel uh, um, Exhibition Centre in London. Uh, 2016 is the year of this uh, annual congress. I'm delighted to be joined by Professor Schrank Nider, who is a professor at the Department of Psychiatry, Psychotherapy and Psychosomatics at the RWTH University in Germany. And he is the former president of the German Association for Psychiatry and Psychotherapy. And he is taking part in a panel discussion later on this afternoon, which looks back at the history of German psychiatry, particularly during the Nazi period. Now, um, Frank, this association, the German Association for uh, Psychiatry and Psychotherapy, which you are the former president, is one of the oldest and perhaps most distinguished uh, psychiatric organizations in the Western world. Yeah, that's true. We are really proud of our... Uh, work and um, we started very early with the beginning of psychiatry coming from from internal medicine later uh, with, to, to, together with neurology and we are a huge organization in Germany all the psychiatrists are proud to be one it's in a way it's a testament to the idea that psychiatry as a discipline and as a, as a profession within medicine had kind of very strong underpinnings um, whereas psychiatry elsewhere in the Western world o o often had a very shaky start <laughs> Yeah, that's probably true. We are more, in the former times, interested in philosophy, um, something which is really neglected, neglected now. We are more interested now, and I think that's good, in biological stuff, in, in social stuff, in, in psychosocial stuff, and so on. For a lot of lay people who don't know much about psychiatry, it may come as a surprise to know that in terms of the history of psychiatry, let's say before the 1950s and 60s, um, anyone studying psychiatry, German names mm -hmm. of eminent psychiatrists would predominate your reading. Could you say something of these famous German psychiatrists that kind of really steered the field right back at the beginning? Yeah, for example, Kreplin, Bleuler, they uh, started with the term of schizophrenia, dementia precox, or with Griesinger, Griesinger uh, who started with uh, biological approaches in, in uh, uh, psychiatry, later with, with guys who are more uh, inventing the psychology into psychiatry, and, and, and nowadays it's more psychotherapy. Is that strong tradition, strong history, the pride uh, of German psychiatry, does that have anything to do with what then happened during the Nazi period. This is a period that you're interested in and you believe is very important for German psychiatry to try and remember, and German psychiatry had almost forgotten and maybe forgotten on purpose. On purpose, definitely. Yes, that what happened in the, in the Nazi time. During the Nazi time was really horrible. More than 400,000 people, not only in uh, Germany, but also in, in other European countries were underwent compulsory uh, sterilization, more than 200,000, probably 300,000 people uh, in Europe uh, were murdered, were killed because they were psychiatric patients. What was the process by which they, they were killed and what was the role of German psychiatrists in that? The German psychiatrists for the start of this action T4, Aktion T4, it's a Tiergartenstraße 4, the Sioux Street in, in Berlin, there was a headquarter of this, uh, not of this illegal organization, and Hitler uh, told them they have to work, uh, they have to find out which psychiatric patients and neurological patients have to be killed. And psychiatrists, neurologists, pediatricians, and others uh, make a red cross on sheets where they get very, very minor information about patients, and they decided who has to stay alive or not. Later, um, psychiatrists helped, together with nurses, with others, to kill the patients with uh, phenobarbital, with other stuff, uh, by starving. So it's really a horrible time. So this killing, and, and hundreds and thousands of patients were, were killed, um, happened under a Nazi direction, and this, this unit is called T4, named after the address where it was based. Um, but why did the doctors so willingly collaborate? Because they seemed keen to collaborate. What, what was going on? Uh, they almost see, see, saw it as part of their medical duty. It wasn't so much a, a political act where they were obeying their, their political masters, it, feel, it feels like. So my opinion is that it's not really a Nazi direction to use the doctors to kill patients. Um, it's more that 
the doctors and others are part of the Nazi time. This means the um, doctors, in this case, are interested in fulfilling everything. And they are interested in killing patients. It's really not that what they have learned. But one of the interesting shifts is the notion that doctors can kill patients. It seems a corruption of the basic point of medicine. And that's an interesting thing to think about sociologically, how that happened. Good question. I'm not really a historian. I'm more, or I'm coming from psychology and psychiatry, and I'm, I don't know much about this. Um, but I think they are really enthusiastic because of uh, Nazi ideological stuff. When you think about uh, eugenics, eugenics started in the 20s, 30s of the last century, century even in the United Kingdom, also in the United States and in different other countries, not only in, in Europe. And all the people, including psychiatrists, neurologists, are very much interested in eug eugenics. And the germ fulfilled everything, not the other countries. Eugenics is very popular in the Western world. America in particular is very interested in it in the first half of the 20th century. And in fact, in America, I think many, as many as 60,000 women um, of diagnosed with a low IQ or various mental health problems were sterilized up until the 1960s. So what's interesting is the, the, they embraced the idea of genetic purity and trying to exclude from the gene pool people who had mental health problems or mentally defective, as they would put it. Yet the Americans never went the Nazi route of actually killing patients. They forcibly sterilized them. So there's something interesting happens. Although there is a, a, a convergence over an interest in eugenics, something happens in Nazi Germany that takes it down a much darker route. I think the, the, the way for the darker route is that, there's, that it's, it was politically correct to do such things. Um, and they were suggested by the Nazi politicians, and the doctors are very much interested to fulfill everything. The other thing that's interesting is the role of this German Association for Psychiatry and Psychotherapy, or a former president, and the role of psychiatric organizations. Uh, there's the role of an individual psychiatrist, but what are your thoughts about the role of the association that you were a former president of during this, this very dark time? It was horrible because uh, director of, of or the president of our organization in the former times was one of the, ma was of the um, most influential um, psychiatrists. Um, he was a mass murderer in, in ideological killings. Uh, he was uh, interested in research with, with patients, uh, but not research like we, we are doing at the moment. It's more research uh, coming from patients from, from hospitals, from, from concentration, concentration camps and so on. So that's what was another driver, because you got access to brains, um, which was the big thing that people wanted to do research on. In, in killing all these patients, you can then do autopsies and pathological research on the brains that were retrieved. And it was a great way, if I can put it that way, of getting a lot of brains very quickly. Was that one of the drivers, yes, the passion for research? Definitely, but only one. The main thing, I think, is the value of the, of the patients, the value of humans. Um, if someone cannot work, is not valuable to live again or to, to still live. So there was a, there was a convergence with, with psychiatry, diagnosis, mental illness, low IQ, and uh, a, a notion of being functional in society. Functional the, in the sense of working, able to work. So if you were not able to work, that's almost raise questions of diagnosis? Not really. It's, I think it's an independent of, of diagnosis. Because I'm wondering if we haven't come a little bit full circle today, that when psychiatrists are making an assessment, they often do a functional assessment. To what extent is this person functioning in society? And if someone isn't functioning in society, if they're not working and they're withdrawn, there's a sense in which that often becomes a, a pathway by which people attract a psychiatric label. But I think that's different. Function in society is different from what happened uh, in former times. Function in society in former times means, is he a valuable human? Does it mean, and this means, is he able to work, to finance him or herself, and so on. So the patients which were killed uh, formerly, there can be really persons who were 
working in a different field, who are working uh, or who are have their role in their family and so on. They are not worthless. So, so valuable role was also maybe part of this idea of a thrusting Germany, which was what's the point of you if you're not going to help us uh, build the society, make it strong and defend uh, the motherland. Is that the kind of ideology? Yes, definitely. But was that partly because the country felt under threat and therefore everyone had to pull at the, at the oars, as it were? No. So it was, it was more a sense in which you, everyone had to take part in this common purpose, otherwise there was no point to you. Yeah, but it's it's the psychiatrist and the other patient and the other persons, uh, like people from law or from from other disciplines in medicine, they are interesting in fulfilling these ideas. They are not for, they are not forced to do this. Were there many psychiatrists that opposed uh, this program of killing of patients? It's difficult to uh, to answer to this. I think there are many psychiatrists and uh, many physicians. Uh, who are a member of the Nazi parties, who are uh, working with, with all the Nazi staff. Um, there are only a few, even professors, uh, heads of, of university departments, and so the leading people of the field are working in the skilling centers. It's, it's easy to think of this as something way back in the past. You have been very interested in bringing back memories. Why, why are you so interested in reacquainting the modern profession in Germany with its history? Because I think it's important to learn about what happened uh, for, the, uh, for the future. And we cannot say, we have, I think we have different aspects. One is the victims. We have to apologize. We have to think about what happened. We have to make research. What happened? Everything, as you mentioned before, was neglected before. Um, and the second thing is, what can we learn for the future de debates? For example, um, um, sterilizations, uh, for example, free will, for example, um, ending, the li ending their own life uh, before death and so. Could you say something about the, the, the interesting link with free will? Because that's an interesting point to bring up. <laughs> Is someone able to live his life on his own role, whatever he wants to do? Um, is it okay to say to someone who is different, who is, for example, psychotic, uh, I am the phys physician and I have to say to you what you are thinking and what you are doing and what is allowed and what is not allowed? Sometimes you have someone from law who helps you as a physician but I think the main thing is to have respect for this, what patients are doing, and relatives. There is a danger, many people would say, that we are in grave danger of returning full cycle back to the kind of era before the Nazi ideology, which is the rise of biological psychiatry, the rise of the idea that whenever there's a psychiatric disorder or a psychological problem, there's a biological underpinning, there's a dysfunction in the brain, structural or functional. Because there is some interesting research evidence that when the public are exposed to biological theories, let's say, of the, the causes of schizophrenia, they tend to produce more social distance with people with schizophrenia. They tend to want to... It, the, the, the diagnosis gets stigmatized more, and people don't want to have a, someone with schizophrenia babysitting their children, for example, if, if they're exposed to biological theories, as or opposed to... In, or live in the neighborhood. That's right. So in, in a way, the, bi the biological story, which is the dominant story in modern psychiatry, um, is in danger of sending us back to the Nazi era, possibly? No, no definitely not. I think we have to learn and we have to understand why our mental disorders happen and why they influence individuals' behavior. But there's a sense in which the biological story tends to lead us to see people with these disorders as a bit different, whereas the psychoanalytical story, or the psychodynamic story, tends to make them seem a bit more like us. The Freudian um, story, although rejected now by modern psychiatry, was about the idea that all of us have unacceptable uh, pathology within us. It, it was more um, a, a, a view that we were all lay, lay on a spectrum, whereas the biological story seems to say that we are categorically different. But it's not really evidence-based. So I think uh, even, psych even biological psychiatry is nowadays uh, in, a, in a circle together with uh, psycho psychosocial staff and all other staff. It's not only the, the cell and it's not only the hippocampus, it's also the environment. 
But psychiatrists have historically found it difficult to, to keep all of these balls in the air. They've tended to, to camp themselves into one camp or the other, biology, psychology, etc. But, but I think that's not the recent idea. The recent idea is really to combine everything. And do you think modern psychiatry is doing that? Sure. I try. <laughs> um, wh why now? Why should we now be, be um, interested in uh, this, this story, uh, as opposed to why, why was it not um, covered before? Why, why is there sudden interest, and you, you're at the vanguard of this, uh, to bring back the memories? There were only some initiatives before, and uh, these initiatives were usually regionally uh, focused. It means that someone in, in, a diff in a special hospital is investigating what happened in this hospital. Uh, however, the German Association for Psychiatry and Psychotherapy never made any step towards uh, victims, towards uh, relatives. And we started in 2009 with, you can call it a campaign, we changed um, the statue of our organization. And in the first paragraph, we mentioned that this is really something which is very, very important for us to think about, to um, work different compared to former times. Um, in 2010, we celebrate a huge uh, ceremony with 3,000 3, uh, different psychiatrists uh, from Germany. And I, as a president, uh, told everyone that we are very sorry about what happened, that we want to learn about this. Uh, we don't want to continue this, and we want to make research, we want to learn what happened. Later, we excluded two honorary members of uh, our association, former presidents, after 45 presidents. Um, but before 45, some of the reviewers of this T4 action, so they sent patients to uh, camps, to um, murdering centers, um, and after the war they were professors of psychiatry in Germany and were presidents of our association. So we excluded them. Um, we started with an international campaign uh, in the sense that we have a commission, an international commission of uh, historians, medical historians, and they told us what to do. And first thing they said, do research. So they supervised a campaign, no, uh, they supervised a research project. Uh, what is the uh, what have the psychiatrists and the psychiatric association between 33 and 45 have done? This is, these are some examples of our engagement at the moment. Some people might say there's a slight danger, given psychiatry has a stigma attached to it, usually, um, that you're going to re re return to that stigma. You're going to make the public frightened again of, of psychiatrists. No, I think I, I never get any uh, of these responses. Um, I think it's very important for us as psychiatrists to be transparent, to be open. When you were discovering what happened uh, in the world of psychiatry in Germany during the Nazi period, what was the most shocking discovery for you, or the most surprising discovery, or disturbing discovery? That the psychiatrists and the, and the physicians are not monsters, that they are people like you and me. And why was that disturbing? Because, as you mentioned before, physicians have learned to help people and not to kill patient, patients. And how fast the process of change occurred. In other words, they moved from being physicians like you and me to people doing these, these terrible things very quickly. Over years. Some years, only a few years. Hmm. And in a way, it remains a conundrum. The famous Stanley Milgram experiments uh, in the 60s were an attempt to try and understand what was going on. And the famous theory is that these people were obeying orders. Do you buy that? theory, or do you think something else was happening as well? So I'm not a historian, so you have to ask someone else. Do you think that the profession has changed enough so that there will be enough people to ensure that we rebel against the state should it happen again? Because psychiatrists have always, in a way, been slightly embedded in the politics of the state a bit more than the rest of mm. medicine, because we've always needed the state to, to back us in terms of providing uh, the police to help with difficult patients and also psychiatric institutions like psychiatric hospitals. So there's a sense in which psychiatrists have found it difficult to, to be separate from the state. But I think it's easier for psychiatrists because they have some 
fundamentals in, in psychology and philosophy and sociology, um, they are not only organ oriented like someone from surgery or so. This is the reason why it's the most um, impressive and the most interesting discipline. However, as you mentioned, it's, it's a little more dangerous. However, we are understanding as psychiatrists what happened in the society. So we can really work on this. We, we speak at the moment of great political turmoil in Europe, and it is possible that the far right might rise again. And if that happened, I'm going to ask you a very difficult question, uh, perhaps our closing question. If it was to happen again that the far right was to rise again or totalitarian regimes were to come to dominate major European countries like Germany or France or Italy or Spain, do you think it is possible that psychiatrists would collaborate uh, in exactly the same way as before or is there a chance of more resistance? I don't hope so. I think in, even in Germany, psychiatrists have learned their lessons. So you're optimistic about the future? Yes, not about the right-wing stuff, but about psychiatry. You're pessimistic about the right-wing stuff, but you're optimistic about psychiatry? Yes. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.